guys welcome back to another video we are figuring out what our plan is because we always tend to leave early it's like 8 a.m. so we're coming up with a game plan because we can't pick up the car technically I think the rental car that we're getting until about noon and it's only a 23 minute drive and it's 8 a.m. <laughs> yep so we're gonna figure out where we want to hang out I don't want to overstay our welcome here at this Cracker Barrel we didn't seem to bother anybody here it's a closed down Cracker Barrel which is a shame uh, it would have been nice to go in for some dinner last night, but hey, hard to complain. A good rain last night, really good rain last night. So basically, free car washes all around. Uh, <laughs> I should get up on the roof with some Dawn dish soap every now and then and scrub her down in the rain. I mean, free water, right? So where are we going? We're going to the Human Bean, which is a coffee stand here in Portland. It's a chain. And then we're gonna go to hang out. Just there's a shopping center that's got like a Best Buy, a Target, a bunch of other stuff. There's an IKEA right there, Home Depot. We're just gonna go hang out in that parking lot until it gets a little closer to noon, and then we're right by the airport to go pick up the rental car. Awesome. Somewhere to park this big old rig. We don't want to overstay our welcome here. All right. It was a pretty quiet stay, actually. Once, once it, uh, what, 9.30, once it gets dark, really, the super loud cars quit hearing them. Yeah. Funny how that works. Ugh. All right. One of the things that needs to be adjusted, these shades. I hate that they, they tap like that. It's the most annoying thing. Also, happy Easter, guys. You'll see this tomorrow, so. You know, but happy belated Easter. It is a dark day out here. Oh, a human being. Oh, okay, let's see. A uh, oh, big old parking lot behind there. Oh, that's fun then. Oh, the big dip. I still have uh, the reflex of breaking super hard so that we don't scrape our. <laughs> we don't bottom out on our motor. Like we did on the esteem all the time. Every freaking time we went out, we scraped. We have not, we have not scraped on this one time, as one might expect. Just can't see us. All right. Legacy Medical Group. Huh. The Legacy Media. The name of this coffee stand is the Human Bean. I think that is the funniest thing. Sometimes <laughs> I feel like a human being. The human being. And I believe we have also we've also seen these down in Scottsdale. Yeah, I think we went to them one time. Well, here's a new one. A little rock star. I haven't had a rock star energy drink <laughs> in a very long time, but it's a mango guava. Mango guava. Mango guava blackberry. Blackberry. Mango guava blackberry. Anyways, interesting one, so we'll see. I got a Mexi Mocha, which is like a Mexican hot chocolate, but with coffee in it. Before you guys say, well, energy drinks are bad for you. Absolutely, do not drink energy drinks. However, uh, we have been really good at not drinking soda. Mm -hmm. I think we had a Baja Blast at Taco Bell. Hard to beat. But uh, otherwise, we really haven't had a soda in a couple weeks. And the trick is the sugar-free- Sparkling water. Sparkling water from Walmart, yeah. The All-Americans or whatever. One, yeah. Uh, yeah, those really are pretty damn good. Um, and uh, with that, it like satisfies the craving no longer want like soda so then energy drinks are the last thing to quit 
and we're back on the bandwagon. We we like fall off. It's we'll like so do hard. it for like a couple months. Uh, pretty damn sugar free, you know. No sugary drinks, and I think that's the biggest problem, right? Because it just it's a lot. Um, and and I think we fall off because we'll go to a restaurant. We're like, ah, we'll just have one Dr Pepper, <laughs> legit, uh, or whatever it is. Uh, but we're almost there. We should totally go to uh, Recumbent PDX. That would be fun. Go ride some recumbent bikes. For any of you guys out there, and I know we have a lot of folks from the Pacific Northwest, have any of you guys ridden a re recumbent tricycle or a recumbent bicycle? You know, the ones where you kind of sit back, kind of like in a lazy boy sort of chair and you pedal feet out front. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on them? Uh, Cause I love them. You don't seem to. No, I don't like how low, the, I feel like you can't see me. Even though you have a little dingy flag, I don't like that you can't see me. I don't like being that low to the ground. No. Well, it is, it's interesting. I love it. I love it. I'm not worried. And I've, I mean, I've been riding bikes all my life, right? But, um, yeah, but I, I noticed that folks, cars will not, they're less inclined to pass you because you're wider. They perceive you as being wider than you actually are versus when you, I think when you're on a bicycle, it just kind of looks like you're standing in the road. Uh, but when you have two wheel, now all of a sudden you're a more substantial vehicle. They don't want to pass you like any other vehicle on the road. I think that's kind of interesting. I like that part. I'm not worried about the visibility myself uh, because they're not, you know, all in all, you're not much lower than you would be on a bicycle, I don't think. But what are your guys' thoughts? Well, this is kind of a pretty road. It's a really pretty road. Huh. I, uh, I know a lot of folks, and it's very valid, uh, they mention how it rains a lot here in the Pacific Northwest. It sure does. But look at the beautiful trees and uh, greenery we have because of it. Isn't that wonderful? Uphill we go. Just gorgeous out here. I don't like the way these trees lean, but We only hit one branch <laughs> right as we came around a corner. Wasn't too bad. Mm. We're like climbing a mountain here. What the? <laughs> Google Maps did not tell me this was happening. Yeah, what the heck? Whoa. Oh, I love the moss. Beautiful. We did all of that uphill just to go right back downhill. <laughs> Great. At least this was what was backed up for miles and miles yesterday. No traffic this morning. It makes me wonder though, the Oregon Zoo is sitting on this hill. Has anybody that's walking been to the Oregon Zoo? Is it just a big mountain in there? Hmm. You know, I was thinking of all the all the places that we can go and take our bicycles while we're out in Redmond at a hotel, right? And I notice they have EV charging stations. They're, they're popping up everywhere, right? What about e-bike charging stations? You know, you ride somewhere, it's 20 miles away. You get off, you wanna walk around the zoo, whatever it might be, right? What about e-bike charging stations? I, I demand equal action. I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. A whole encampment there. Uh, some interesting incentive actually in the future. I know that there's a, a, a bill being reintroduced for an e-bike tax credit. I think that's kind of interesting. Um, where I think that they, they basically give you a refund if you bought an e-bike up to a certain amount of money, 8,500 bucks or something like that. An $8,500 e-bike is, whew, that's a nice e-bike. I know that not everybody that watches us likes biking or even likes e-bikes or whatever, but I do think it makes it makes sense. Look at that array. Oh, that's an interesting solar array, yeah. Oh, so but I think it makes sense though uh, to have a lot of folks that if you're only you know going two miles or you commute to work and you're in traffic and, and you're not that far, you can reasonably bicycle, 
right? You're in the city already. Doesn't it make sense to uh, uh, to have an e-bike? I think so. Or a regular bicycle if you want, you know. I-5 North? Woo. Over the bridges. Oh, we did this backwards, actually. We went through the, br the woods and then over the bridge. <laughs> Portland really, and, and, and say what you will, guys, Portland really is a very interesting city. Lots of potential here, you know? I think it, I think it is. With the right, the right management, a little cleanup, a lot of cleanup. I like the black and white buildings, East Bank Commerce Center. That's a cool looking building there. In Nashville, there was a cool old building like that you could rent the top floor out for like weddings and events and stuff. That was really old, brick, but it painted. Hmm. It was a character. Oh, look at. Hmm. Kind of looked like there was a little tiny, tiny, tiny home, a micro home. I now and that, and I think I've already mentioned this before, but in case you guys didn't see it, I think that's a cool thing. Is these uh, the 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 Portland's push towards alternative dwellings? Uh, not only did they not get in the way, and they op they kept they kept the mind open, right? The uh, the enforcement open to alternative dwellings and tiny homes. You know, which I think is why it really became popular here in uh, the early 2010s. But they also now actually promote it in certain ways, which I think is cool. You know, it's, uh, I think they've written it into uh, the codes. It's a cool bridge. I think one thing that really bugs me is that I think we would really fit in in Portland. And hear me out. Obviously, <laughs> there are some issues out here. We all know this. And uh, I think that addressing these problems, you know, calling out the problems, acknowledging it, and uh, uh, I think that's, a, obviously, that's a first step to getting things resolved. But I really think we would fit in, right? Like, we're a little weird. <laughs> They're a little weird out here. Uh, we love biking. We love getting around on two wheels. They have great infrastructure out here. Cool transportation options. Uh, they love tiny living, RVs, you know, in general. You know, that's a, that's a vibe out here. Um, and clearly that's what we're into. They love dogs, we love dogs. <laughs> you know, I think, I think it would be a, I don't know, I think, I think it would be a cool, a cool place to spend some time. Uh, granted, you do have to find your click, right? And uh, and so, like, no matter where you go, you'll find people with similar political leanings, you know, uh, whichever way you go. And, oh, but I think it's just a matter of finding your, your tribe and, and hanging out in places that kind of vibe with you. So it's, it is something, we've talked about staying here for a few weeks and really exploring the place more, but yeah. um, I think we would have to find the right spot <laughs> we talked about that here, we talked about San Francisco, we talked about like a few different places that we'd like to spend a couple weeks just exploring. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Because I, I, I don't want to like go out for a, a lovely day of biking and, and you find a hole in the wall, like chicken waffle stand and, and it's delayed, you're having a great day, you come back and your wheels are missing. You know what I mean? <laughs> or like your, your home is gone. And, and Speaking <laughs> of, if you're in the Portland area and have never been to the waffle window, waffle. highly recommend. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, you had a you know, no co-worker that was telling you about that. We stopped by. That was pretty cool. That was actually pretty good chicken. Not gonna lie, way way better than I expected. And they've got a couple of them out here, and they have a lot of like cool transportation options, right? The tram uh, or TriMet, I think is what they call it. Yeah, I think that's kind of it's just a better option to like help with the traffic. Um, and people seem to be fairly healthy out here. But I think it's a lot like Seattle and uh, really a lot of these cities where uh, I think Chicago's a little different. I think Chicago, like if you're in the bad areas, you're in the bad areas for a while. But yeah. with Seattle though, you can go one block over, pristine, no graffiti, no nonsense, no broken windows. You go another block and you've entered the danger zone. <laughs> but I don't know. 
I don't know. Seattle's danger zone is moving though too. It all—it's always moving, yeah. Seems like it's kind of moving out further out of the downtown area. So we and we have a new mayor, Mayor Bruce uh, Harrell, Bruce Harrell, Bruce H. I believe is his name. Um, I got us. I'm very, very uh, excited to see what he does because so far, you know, he made a few promises uh, and he has kept many of them. You know, no, no politician can do anything alone, you know, so there's that. Uh, but the man compared to uh, Jenny Durkin that we had in Seattle before, who I gotta say, you know, nobody's perfect, but she was an absolute fool. Um, just drove this city to the ground. I think Bruce is doing a pretty good job. And uh, he is actually refunding Seattle police <laughs> and strike teams and, and um, you know, really building it back. And I don't, we'll see, we'll see what happens. I think um, we'll see, because it's not just the mayor that says, you know, snaps his finger and says, I want it to be better, but it's also the prosecutors and it's also the, you know, but everybody's up for election and we'll see. Uh, uh, okay, all right, we made it. Uh, well, <laughs> okay, I think we still have both air conditioners. All right. <laughs> I like that this right there, the, the graffiti was over top of the uh, clearance height. That was nice. Yeah, that's not cool at all. Oh, free mirrors. Ooh, Das Ikea. Oh. Uh, looks like they're open, doesn't it? They open at 9. Oh, do they? Oh, two, three minutes. You know, we had to go and take a stroll through. I don't think I'm going to make a whole video about it. But, if we see anything interesting, then we can add it. Das Entrance. <laughs> you know what? I kind of like this. Especially on the green background. That's soothing. Aren't these guys cute? Well, Ikea was a success because we didn't buy anything. We almost did. <laughs> we almost did. We're uh, looking for a nice rug and we will get there eventually. But close. yeah, oh, so maybe something that brings a little bit of warmth in. Go straight this light. Yep, so we'll go ahead and drop Emma off to get the rental car here at the airport. And then she'll just catch up with us because I don't do above. 60 really that's about my comfort zone beautiful cherry blossoms here gorgeous all right what is it like to drive an rv through the airport well we're gonna find out aren't we yes indeed i figure if a bus can make it we can make it try to avoid areas that are too short probably a good thing and uh slow down and give yourself time to react to signs and make a decision if uh, you're in doubt here we are technically arriving you are now free to move about the cabin right yep we're a truck Seven foot four clearance, eleven point five. Yep. I can walk down the rattles. Damn right you can. <laughs> oh, such a cool even the parking garages look cool here, yeah. The airports really are like architectural art. Yeah, they are very interesting. And they make their money, that's for sure. Commercial vehicle valet parking. Cool. You can go down from the other end if you want. Oh, just skip through some of this? Yep. Okay. This is not uh, nerve wracking at all. I guess I could have just dropped it right there. Go ahead, bud. Uh, no, not here. All right, and now.
<laughs> well, that worked, didn't it? All right. Off we go. We've got Google Maps loaded up to so tell us where to go. We're an hour and 51 minutes. I didn't think we were that far from Coburg here in Portland. Okay. All right, and we should be right at 12 foot nine, or if we, uh, if we have a clearance of 13 feet, we're usually good. Or we are good. <laughs> All right, that was easy. That was super easy. I know a lot of folks are so uh, concerned. I follow the signs and um, probably be all right. in the direction <laughs> that we've been going in terms of traffic. Another perspective of the city here. Boy, this is some, uh, some miserable weather here. <laughs> At least it's a lot less windy today than uh, even yesterday, the last couple, uh, the past week really, a little bit of wind. But I will say our Pacific Northwest storms out here, not much compared to something <laughs> down in the south or, you know, we're very lucky because we have so many mountains around us in that way. Way station next right. It says it's closed, but I want to run through there because I know the ones in Washington you can still just drive up and get a weight of your unit. I'm curious what we weigh. Hmm. All right, I've got a weight, I see 8,000. Okay, so this All right, so this red thing right here must be the scale and right now I see 7650 So let's get the front axle off And the rear axle is showing 17100 it comes out to 24750 let me just double check that we'll run that one more time in case i'm a i'm a buffoon and don't know what i'm doing slowly up Let's zero it out over there I let it settle at 7700 plus for the front axle and the rear axle's on and it looks like 17150. 17150 equals 24850. So there's a 
I guess there's a hundred pound swing. So one, that's fun. I, uh, <laughs> I think that's pretty cool. Uh, but uh, I think there's about a hundred pound, 200 pound swing in there. So I'm glad that I'm not stepping on the scale here. <laughs> Sheesh. Uh, 24, 850. So we are well under our uh, GVWR for sure. So we have plenty of room to go. That's with full water here. Uh, we don't have the bikes. Each bike is around 70 pounds. So you can add, you know, 150 pounds in there, somewhere in there. We have the dogs. You can add another, uh, you know, 150 pounds or so for Emma. <laughs> so we're, we're, well, I would say we're probably around 25,000 pounds, give or take. Um, that's pretty good. I mean, we've got everything that, you know, just about that uh, needs to be weighed in and factored in with us. So we still have a good amount of weight uh, and we're still underweight. Oh, what a treat is that? <laughs> what a beauty. <laughs> oh, beautiful bus there. Funny enough, I'm listening to GTO <laughs> by Ronnie and the Daytonas played in the movie RV. Isn't that, isn't that just a treat? <laughs> I mean, it's black and white instead of red and white, but I will not be picky. Oh, what, what fun. <laughs> Coburg in one mile. All right. Oh, look at that little scamp. <laughs> Cutie. Pulled by a Mazda CX-5 lighter SUV and actually immediately what is this marathon coach I want to take a look at that <laughs> look at that beauty marathon coach is definitely worth looking into guys if you uh if you're a fan of Prevo buses and such definitely worth looking into look at the coach over here I expect we'll have a little bit of company this evening oh, just just beautiful out here Surrounded by mountains over here. And yeah, we're not far off the highway at all. This is a service station. We've got a truck stop. Michelle. There's a coach pulling in right over here. <laughs> You'll love to see it. We had a friend following us. Which I like to think that uh, strangers are just friends you haven't met yet. <laughs> well, we had a, a Jayco trailer being towed. Keeping up with the, uh, keeping up with us here for about 50 miles. It's just kind of fun. I thought I was the only person that liked to kind of get in line and travel as a pack, even though I don't know <laughs> the person yet. <laughs> That's kind of fun. All right, we're pulling on in now. Here we are. Oh, lots of friends here. Oh, good. Well, there's that, that Neptune's still here. And we've got a few spots that we can pick. So we got a Monterey here. Interesting. A Winnebago's in. That Discovery's still in here. So we've got one spot here. We've got American Coach. I think this is going to be our best, our best option. A Monaco executive. Oh, it's got another bounder over here. Fun. We have free power here, unlimited power. So that'll be nice too. It's perfect. Nice and level. I'd just like to show you guys what uh, making camp looks like. Hope you don't mind. I think it's kind of interesting every time. Still blows my mind how much bigger these RVs can get <laughs> being, uh, you know, slid out. Just crazy. And that part is falling. So that's one of the things I need to adjust. I think the tabs just need a slight adjustment. Oh, got a bounder over there, a discovery. Oh, we'll be, uh, we'll be looking back here. All right. 
shut down the command center. All right. And that's our rental. Funny enough, a CX-5, just like I noticed was pulling that little 13-foot uh, scamp. Isn't that, isn't that nice? Okie dokie. So, I'm wondering what this is. That's not funny. <laughs> it's a chicken. Oh, yeah, we got a beaver. That's a nice... That is a nice rig. We've got Neptune, Discovery, Holiday Rambler, something or other. Ambassador, I think. Monaco Dynasty, that's a beauty. American Coach, super fancy. We've got us. And is that another, is that another beaver here? Yep, that's another beaver. That's a beauty. Okay. The Executive by Monaco, that's a beauty. And we've got a bounder and a big old satellite on there. Rev Technical Center. It is kind of funny seeing this. Uh, oh, pulling behind a an Escalade. That's a nice, that's a nice big SUV. Got a Bounder and uh, another Discovery, and then a Tiffin Allegra bus. Then we've got our rental car. It's the MX-5, and it's in the lighter silver. They also do this in a nice red, and a couple. Apparently now. We're from Florida, but it does have the all-wheel drive. Oh, nice little car. <laughs> Peep these digs. <laughs> no, it looks like they they did not. Yeah, these are got the leather. That was partial leather. That's a nice little car. Huh. Yeah. And yeah, this is this is pretty cool. All right, it's kind of weird that this pops up like this, but you also can't not touch screen. You see the dial. Oh, well, that's kind of distracting. I guess it makes sense though. You're you're not way out here, but it's a little weird. So, anywho, we are gonna go grab some dinner. Come back do a little exploring later, but we're gonna end the video here so you don't get to have dinner and explore with us. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video. Bye, guys. Bye.